look impressive and they're here running uh, to a guard to the front line should this protest get out of hand. Uh, that's not the case at the moment, we've had a piece of chanting, uh, but certainly to take the temperature here you can tell that those people who turned out today are very, very annoying. It's interesting however, we don't know who has actually organised this. The organisers have come forward, um, the word spread on email, it spread on Facebook, um, but no one really wants to put their head above the carpet for fear of you know, like an administrative referendum. From the council. That would also explain why the uh, 35 tenants who had letters written to them by Southern Council have also uh, not turned up. But um, Southern Council is not the only uh, council, local borough, to write to their tenants. Wandsworth Council, over on the other uh, side of South London, has um, also written to one tenant, and among the council grants, it is a conservative council. But the moment Khan cuts a right on the paper side is Tony Belt, Councillor Tony Belt, last year award has been joined from Wandsworth over to Solar today. They joined me now. Tony, why have you uh, crossed Council Council Land? I feel, I feel very strongly about this issue. I wanted to hear, see what was happening in Southwark. I want to stop what was council evicting this particular tenant. Indeed, I want to stop councils evicting tenants for non-housing management reasons. What do you mean by non-management housing? I have no, <coughs> excuse me, I have no argument against councils evicting people who don't pay their rents, or smash the flats up, or harass the neighbours, or all sorts of things to do with the housing, housing management issues. But if a tenant, um, if a tenant is shoplifting at the other end of the country, I don't think they should be evicted for that reason. For all sorts of reasons, only occupiers don't get evicted for that reason, and there are other reasons as well. But this clause in council contracts, was that an important clause? Well, the claw, there are two clauses, two relevant clauses in Wandsworth's case. I imagine Southwark's much the same. One is about the housing management issues, which I mentioned, and the other is about committing a crime anywhere in the locality, and the locality is interpreted as Wandsworth. So that results in very strange peculiarities, like you can be convicted of something three miles away, but 100 yards across the border in Lambeth, you wouldn't be convicted. But do you think that's an important clause? And I think that clause ought to be scrapped. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the family in, in Wandsworth case, because these are like uh, nameless, faceless uh, tenants in, in Wandsworth and indeed where we are now in Southern. The case of Wandsworth, talk to me about the family in the position they were. There are three of them. There's a mother aged 43, there's uh, the boy concerned who's just 18, and an eight year old sister. Uh, they, not that this is particularly relevant, but they all go to church every Sunday, they work for charities, he works for a charity. Um, I personally don't think the case against him is very good. So I think Wandsworth Council have made a very bad decision as picking as a, an example a case where they're in danger, it might get thrown out of court even. So they are convicting before guilt is proven. But what is the future facing? Well, there'd be, presumably if the council were to go ahead, and I think the court judge might say that's not going to happen anyway, they'd be homeless and the council would find themselves having to rehouse them. What is more, if this went ahead right across London and the figures we've got, we're talking about 500 homeless families. And that's going to do a lot of good for community solidarity, um, more riots, terrible decision. Thank you very much for That's kind of the that's kind of Establishment, the ruling class of this society get on free, but also the people, the level of punishment that these people, so called rioters, have been given has been almost unprecedented. 
not for 20 or 30 years probably has this scale of punishment been meted out to people who this government perceives as its enemies. I remember the day uh, two or three decades ago when the government decided they were going to imprison people for the crime of picketing. And what happened? I remember that thousands of people rallied to their support, threatened and went out on strike and the people were free. That's the sort of action which we need if we are going to defend our rights. The other thing that needs to be said and why this protest is taking place here today is because the people who are being uh, imprisoned and largely that is happening even for the desultory crimes that I've described a few minutes ago, these people are finding themselves being attacked by the state, by the law, by this government, simply for being council tenants. Now that is an outrage uh, in our society that people who are, at the, who are unable perhaps to buy their own home, people who, as far as this government is concerned, are often perceived as the lowest of the low, shame on them for thinking that, but, they, but th these people are seen as easy, meat, fair game, and the people who deserve the uh, horrendous punishments that are being meted out. None of this uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is valid, but also uh, we must realise that people who are getting put in prison and who are evicted from their homes are facing a lot of social, economic and domestic strife and trouble that it is uh, uh, unreasonable at the least and outrageous, I believe, that these people are being more threatened with these sorts of punishments. What we need to do is to go away from here when this protest finish and realise that there will be more action, some of which will take place under the control of political parties and groups. A lot of it may take place uh, for individuals and groups, but we have to remember that whatever happens, that the real enemy that we face are the people who are in charge of the economics, the system that is giving people who are in living in, in the city areas the worst possible deal they are being given no chance of a job, they are being given no chance of a decent life and we should be blaming the government for the crimes that they are committing. We have to do something to bring those people to justice. My last, my last comment, thank you for listening to me so patiently, is that there are organisations which are taking on the government. There are people not many yards away from you who are willing to uh, encourage you to, to buy their newspapers, to join their organisations. And the, one of the organisations that I think is particularly important to us here in Southwark is uh, the organisation that I'm a member of and so are a number of other people who are here today and our banner. The reason why is because we want to try and unite all of those who are against this government, who are against the cuts, and we want to make sure that action is coordinated and that it is effective, whether it takes place locally, and an example of that is down in Camberwell, where the government, in its wisdom, has decided that it is going to close down Camberwell Job Centre. This is a time when there is something like 40 people looking for every job they can see in this part of London and a time when the government blames people, young people in these city areas for being unemployed and then they do something like this. We need also to take on the government at the national level and please remember that in September and October the Lib Dems and the Tories are having their annual conference uh, the TUC meets early in September. There are lots of focuses for action against this government and lots of focuses to put pressure on the trade unions and the, other politi and the political parties to make sure that they stand up to this government and to its cuts. Right? Uh, if anybody would like to uh, see me at the end uh, about 
yes. Southwark Save Our Services campaign, or if you're still around later on this evening um, at uh, the Elephant and Castle at 7.30, the organising meeting of the Southern SOS will be taking place, and I can give you more information about that and other campaigns that we're helping to coordinate. So thank you again, and I hope other people come and come to the organisers. Why did these riots stop? What initiated Riot? them? Rebellion! Whatever you call them, so uprisings, whatever. Uh, right. what, how did, what, did initi what, what, what initiated it? We have to remember Police Mark, Mark Duggan. We have to remember the name Mark Duggan. Justice for Mark Duggan! Justice for Mark Duggan! Justice on the mat! The police are brutalising working class young people, black people, working class people. What, uh, what I'm, I'm here, part of Suffolk Save Our Services, I'm sickened by what I've, I've read in the papers, what I've seen, that this council, a Labour council, is threatening to evict 35 families because one member of their family may, not, not even definitely have, may be guilty of, of a crime in the association of the rights. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Who's evicting who's evicting the bankers out of their homes? Yeah. Who's evicting those who's evicting those MPs out of their homes who stole all that money? What colour crime? It's all right. A little boy steals it, takes a, a, a bottle of water six months. Some people go into prison for mentioning the word right on Facebook. It doesn't matter. We can evict the Tories. We can evict Labour. It doesn't matter who gets into it, it doesn't matter who wins the next election. The government's always there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What we are seeing is not justice for the truth. We are seeing an attack on ordinary working class people. What they tell us is not to behave. It's do as we say or we will crush you. What we need. What we need to do is to organise as a class. This is not this is not a sporadic attack. This is an attack by a ruling group of people who want to ensure that the rest of us, are, our wages are kept down, people are kept unemployed. We need a response that empowers ordinary people. We're seeing 45% cuts to youth services. We're seeing jobs job centres being closed. I want people to get involved in something save our services. Get involved with what's happening in Dale Farm as well. What's happening here? The just escalation of what's happening here. My final thing, as I say, get involved. I've got a mailing list as well if you want to be involved in an organised local response. Something that is coordinated, something that actually goes to the heart of the matter. Then see me afterwards, please other people speak.